What happens when you get into debt? Get out, mate. Come back please, with a police please, officer. Please. You can't do And you can't. I haven't got any money. Or won't pay it back. Get off on my property. In this series, we meet the people who are losing their homes. Hello, would you like to open the door? I've got 24 hours. Find somewhere else to go. Their cars. Can you pay this yes or not? I can't go with me now. I'm not going to take your car. And their possessions. I can't afford to pay the rent, but £700 telly. We meet the people who are owed money. Just got taken advantage of, big time. And the people whose job it is to collect it. I don't want to touch that. Don't panic. Because when you can't pay, they'll take it away. We'll start unplugging and uh, get things wrapped up for transportation. You pay me, and then I'll start. Almost one million small businesses suffered from late payments last year. In total, they were owed over £30 billion. Stuart McCracken and Ian Taylor are High Court enforcement agents. You can run, but you can't hide, isn't that right, Ian? 28-year-old Stuart has been in the business for 10 years. But former construction worker Ian is new to the industry. The thing is, this job is, what, 60% driving, 20% waiting. It's not just. Together, they travel the country in pursuit of debts and debtors. That's the exciting thing about the job. You just don't know what you're going into. Stuart and Ian are in Oxford to collect a £2,500 debt. According to these notes, there's a taxi firm and, like, a tyre garage place. Is it? The debt dates back to 2012 and is owed by a taxi firm to a local electrician. Armed with a High Court writ, Stuart and Ian need immediate payment. Or they can seize goods to cover the debt. But today's mission is going to be challenging. Hello? We're after Mr... Um, we were last night. Right. Yeah. Yeah, if you could, please, that'd be great. Cheers, thank you. The radio controller calls the director of the company named on the writ. Yeah, if you could, mate, please. Patience is key to this job. Um, uh, if you start losing your patience, you start losing sight of the goal, which is ultimately getting that situation resolved, hopefully in the way of the claimant getting his money back. How long do you think he'll be? Because the fact of the matter is, mate, if it's... I'll have to wait another 45 minutes, I'm going to be ringing transport to have stuff removed. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're not here to cause distress or no. disrupt the business, mate. We just need to get payment sorted, that's all. Back to the waiting bit again. Mm. I love standing in dark corridors all day, every day. <laughs> So have you nice shiny new boots worn in there, Ian? Pretty much, yeah. Bit of baby oil. Oh, all right. But you've got a bit of that round your house, haven't you? <laughs> well, bought it specially. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Sure you did, mate. We're all friends here. <laughs> An hour and 20 minutes later, and Stuart and Ian are still waiting. But they've run out of patience. So I'm just waiting for a phone call. To see how long transport are going to be, and uh, we'll be getting a locksmith as well to open, oh, open this door. Has he turned up, has he? The company owner arrives in the nick of time. Hello there, sir, are you all right? Okay. My name is Mr McCracken, High Court Enforcement Agent. I've been asked to attend with regards to an outstanding writ. OK. That's a copy for you there. OK, we're at the stage now. The total amount outstanding, sir, is £2,679.74. The company named on the writ is an executive car service. Its address is listed at these premises. Yes, Did you check in the company house? We have already. It's already okay. active. OK, so you need to make payments, if not... This, this is... The man is also the director of another firm, which is now clearly established at the same address as the other company. Not going around in circles with us, so you either make payments or the goods are being removed. Any payments? Okay. 
Okay. And that's it. That's fine. Stop. Okay, no problem at all, sir. Okay. So we'll start unplugging stuff and they'll be ringing transportation. Yeah. Okay. They're going to say that the company that we're after doesn't trade out of this premises. But we've already done our checks on company's house. So we'll start unplugging stuff and they'll be ringing transportation. Yeah. Okay. Have, you got a key, have you got a key for that office in there? No. No, you haven't. The company owner insists that he no longer has any assets belonging to the company named on the writ. Stuart needs him to prove it. Have you got an inventory list for all the goods? No, I thought not. Have you got a key for next door, sir? No, I hold you responsible. OK, I'll be ringing transportation then, sir. It doesn't look like the man is going to pay today. So Stuart returns to his original plan of seizing assets. Sometimes people will wait right to the end when we're actually starting to remove the goods and say, look, look, I can pay. And it's, that's what the job's about. It's being patient and playing through that cycle. To make matters worse, there's a problem. Good afternoon. Computer's crashed. Did this thing turn something on? Um, our system's just gone down. My channel. I'm sorry. It's been we aren't going home. Yeah, it's like I say, my mate's a bricklayer. If you ain't got no bricks, you can't build no houses. And I'm a cabbie. If I ain't got no computers, I can't send it The company director has also disappeared. Stuart needs him to deal with the debt. He's left his car here. He's wandered off. So uh, we're, we're just waiting now, mate, see if he comes back. The controller heads home. His departure only makes the owner more upset. OK, now you're holding us to responsibility for our custody. Upstairs, Ian faces the full force of the company owner's anger. And I hold the no responsibility. Your enter promises is not, and I want to have your responsibility. Listen, mate, you need to open up. No, I'm not waiting. And I going to take the legal action against you. You need to let me in. Yeah, you are. You need to let me in, mate. No, I'm not. It's false imprisonment, mate. I'll have you arrested. Phone the police. No, no, leave them, leave them. They can't do nothing. They hold in responsibility. Now my stuff is left because of you. You become unemployed because of you. I need police, please. Yeah, I need uh, immediate police assistance, please. I'm a high court enforcement agent, and one of my agents has uh, been held prisoner inside the building. They're not letting me into the building. People do panic, and they'll try and, try and uh, use intimidation tactics. So the key in this job is to look after each other and try and just defuse that situation as quickly as possible. With the police on their way, the taxi staff finally unblock the door. Right, I've gained access to the building. Someone's just come and let me in now. This is different company. You disconnect my stuff without the permission. Upstairs, the owner's complaints now turn to threats. In a minute before you leave, you write your name, your badge, your company, and you'll see what's about to happen to you. And to your company. Yeah, I need, uh, I'll take a legal action. Yes? Yeah, I come up in the law. OK, you just leave me a letter now. You enter this promise. I am not signing nothing. I do not have to okay. sign anything. You enter my promises without my permission. You no, no, hang on. You don't want to listen. You enter my promises without my permission. I hold the responsibility. <laughs> you destroy yes, the company here. Yes, you need yeah, to answer yeah. the call. No, answer, answer the call. Answer, answer the call. Answer, answer the call, mate. You need to leave that open, mate, I'm afraid. <clears throat> the owner's accusations escalate. Let's see if they kick him out. Yeah, he chose to go. He chose to go. And we have the whole thing on camera. Did we say once that you need to go home? Did we say that? We no, lost, exactly. No, we just exactly. Stop. Did we say that? We have the whole thing on camera. Yes. Okay. So there we go. We lost one bottle of stuff because you're scaring him here. Yeah. No, I'm not. I can see. Ah, oh, the officers have turned up now. Just this white door at the side, officers. All right, that they're here now. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you doing? We are here to make sure that no harm comes to you and no harm comes to these gentlemen here, OK? okay. In relation to the, the taking of property, Hello. we're not here to dictate what is taken. Uh, these gentlemen have decided what they have deemed. How, how come? You presenting well, the law? This, this, no. what, the, what is going on now is called civil law. We're here to enforce any criminal law yeah, and things like that, okay. OK? 
I'm actually quite glad when the police came because it calmed the whole thing down. But as soon as it's resolved, the better. What we'll do is we'll hang around. Just in case. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. The computer equipment is now Stuart's only option of recovering the debt. He still needs to be 100% certain that it belongs to the company named on the writ. The director remains insistent that it does not. I'm just saying in front of this police officer, no. if you take no. any of those stuff, no. I hold your responsibility. You can do so, business. but you need to make a payment. I'm just saying in front of them. Removing it will have serious consequences. What I'm saying to him, give us a few days to prove it. He's not going to allow it. And if he disconnect everything, 35 driver will be off the road unemployed from this second. Not as my son. It's a tough call. Stuart phones his office for advice. Because if we shut everything down, the company can't trade and uh, he'll sue us for loss of business. And so I don't know where we stand with regards to that. Well, would you like to speak to him or... Uh, yeah, bear with me one second. Let me try and grab him, OK? The owner's request for more time to provide paperwork requires approval from the office. There you go. Hello? What I'm saying, if you, if you want to take anything, you, you're responsible to damage the business, this damage. I said to him, I can't see the solicitor straight away. I'm happy to provide this letter from the solicitor in a free working day. Well, I'm telling you, I can't, I can't do nothing now. I can't pay anything. If you want to give me five days to prove this, this is belong to another person, I'm happy. Four hours after he first arrived, Stuart has a plan. Five-day walker. Right, yeah, OK. Yep. He heads back upstairs to break the news. He said that what you can do is you're going to get five days, so you need to sign a control goods agreement, which basically means that the goods are now taken in control of the court. After five days, if you haven't provided that evidence, that gives us the right to come in and remove the goods, but you say that you can get that to us in five days. Right, OK. And then we'll leave you to get on with your day. If the owner is able to provide the evidence, then Stuart and the claimant will have to find another way of getting the money back. Let's get the engine on, get the air con on. Oh, cracking work on that. Do you want to get some lunch? Yeah, please, mate. Do you get lunch? Steve Penner and Paul Bowhill are highly experienced High Court enforcement agents. Hello, Hello sir. We have a High Court warrant here. They spend more and more of their time Hello. evicting tenants who can't or won't pay their rent. Between them, they've overseen 400 evictions in the past 12 months alone. Hayes, Middlesex. Today, the enforcement team are on their way to an eviction armed with a high court writ. There's the writ in the back. Sometimes you go to an eviction and it's devastating to them and they're actually brought to their knees. But at the end of the day, somewhere, someone has been wronged. This case will prove to be a real test for everyone concerned. This is a completely fresh landlord. We've never worked for him before, Steve. The team have been told by the landlord's letting agents that the tenants owe over £7,000 in rent. But they're not here to collect the debt. They're here to repossess the property and evict the tenants. The defendant, Rajinder Kumar and Shashi Bala. Most repossessions are enforced by county court bailiffs and take several weeks. But to get the tenant out sooner, the landlords have applied to the High Court. Shall I get out and talk to the landlord? Yeah, please. The enforcement agents have come without warning. Hello? If the family don't answer the door, Steve can legally break it down. Hello, would you like to open the door, please? I think there's someone coming. Hello there, sir. I'm a High Court Enforcement Officer, and I have a writ from the High Court yeah. to repossess the property now. Now? Now. But we got a letter uh, 10 uh, of uh, 
Okay, this is from the county court. The county court <coughs> has told you that the county bailiffs will come in July. The landlord, obviously not being paid any rent, doesn't want to wait till July. Has now proceeded to the high courts, okay. of which we give no prior notice at all. So if you want to speak to the solicitor, tell him that you have high court enforcement officers here and we're repossessing the property now. This is really bad, this is. Mr Kumar, a van driver, and his wife, Shassi, have lived in London for over eight years. His son and daughter are both under the age of three. It is urgent. Can you please call me back? Thank Mr Kumar can't get hold of his solicitor. Instead, he contacts his children's nursery, which has its own housing advisor. They ask to speak to Steve. So what really needs to happen is... They need to speak to uh, the council, or if you could speak to the council for them and arrange temporary accommodation for them. OK, what he needs to do is get his essentials together so they've got something to wear for the next few days and then we can make arrangements to come back so they can collect the rest of the stuff. But they cannot stay in the property tonight. As harsh as that sounds, that's our instruction. <laughs> It's very difficult when you get to a flat and there are children there because, you know, you're putting them out on the street through no fault of their own. They're going to take some stuff down to the safe store and clear their stuff out. So we've just got to change the lock, which is broken. Mr Kumar claims that he hasn't paid his rent because he's in dispute with the letting agents and a previous landlord. He says the letting agents evicted him from the property and wouldn't let him collect any of the family's possessions. That's it. He has not agreed the rent on this current property with the agents. From 14th of March we are here. We had a uh, three-bedroom house there near the street on Carnarvon Drive. There we had a one-year contract, and we were only there six months. And after six months, uh, they told that you have to move from there. And they put us here, and they sold this property from behind. And they locked it, even all our belongings, because that's why we are sleeping on ground floor. And we have, we have nothing, no furniture and nothing. It's, everything is there. The letting agents have their own point of view. We sold uh, previous property and then they moved here, but when, he, they, when they moved here, they refused to move from here. He was staying illegal, he wasn't paying any rent, he didn't sign any agreement, nothing. They're living since, uh, I think, many, uh, many weeks, and they need to pay, uh, as we already informed him, 500 pounds per week. So it's been, I, I think, about around six, seven hundred thousand. Nobody is against with this uh, paying rent. Yeah. They are asking 500 pounds per week. This is a house is for 500 pounds per week. It is five star hotel or what is this? We are sleeping. Look at this situation. Look at the situation that this is for 500 pounds. He kicked them out somewhere else, put them in here, to say that they could stay in here. And they kicked them out there. There are some circumstances when we go to do a repossession and we can see from the circumstances at the, at the property, it probably wasn't the tenant's fault at the time. On those jobs that, you know, you think to yourself, this is unfair, but our piece of paper tells us that it has to happen. This eviction is the tragic consequence of the dispute with the letting agents. The housing advisor calls back. Uh, hello, now, what are the officers are self-police or not? We're not the police, no. Not by any means. We're high court enforcement. 
Okay. Okay, then I'm calling police and uh, explain them. Huh? Call police. Okay, it's fine. Okay, sir. The police officer is here. Yeah, hello. Hello. Okay. Here's another one. He has this one as well. Unfortunately, they do have the power to remove you today. Yeah. <clears throat> the eviction will go ahead, and the Kumars will be homeless today. But Mrs. Kumar is worried about what will happen to their belongings. Maybe a little bit. Hello, hello, hello. Honestly, I have only small car. Naturally. Yeah, they only need to take their personal belongings because they can come back at yeah. any stage and get the, the remainder you of their property. Enough. For you to get you over a few you days. Over a couple of days, and then you can come back with police and yeah, the landlord yeah, okay, to get your okay. rest of your belongings. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, today you can't give us time. No, nah, not today. I can't. Not today. I can't. <laughs> She is afraid that uh, maybe because they did not let us uh, our belonging to take from there. She is afraid from now we are going also empty hand, like empty hand from here, whatever our belonging is, uh, that they will also not give us back. This uh, she uh, is worried about this. Whatever yeah. is here is safe. It is, on it is locked. Oh, yeah. Because we don't trust them, the agency. It's yeah. safe. It's, it's yeah. No disrespect to you. Okay. He doesn't trust you with the keys. Or he, he will again play around by calling his. Mother. I have the keys. That's it. That's the only answer. We need to be somewhere else. Sorry, I'm not rushing, but we need to be somewhere else. Um, and that's it. You'll have the keys. That's the end of the story. So we need to give them our phone number. I am the only person with the keys. Yeah. Me. No one else. Okay. 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 So you need to call me. Okay in a couple of days or something, when you're ready to move the rest of your stuff. The Kumars still haven't had time to arrange any emergency accommodation, so Steve calls the council on their behalf. He's been on the phone to everybody. Change. They will need Change. emergency yeah, accommodation yeah, as well. Like yeah. yeah. OK, I'll... Uh, I'll Get a copy of that and I'll send it to you straight away. OK, no problem. Thank you, bye-bye. We always try and make things as easy as possible for people once the initial upset has gone. We will do whatever we can to help them out. Things that don't physically cost anything, that makes life so much easier for us. And it shows to the defendant that we are actually human and not just there to do one job and that's the end of it. He's going to call you back in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. In he's going to call you in oh, 10 minutes. Thank you, uh, We're going to send him the paperwork. Okay. We'll email him the paperwork. I hope they will arrange something for today in emergency. They asked us whether we have someone, but we have nobody. I told him that uh, we have only to sit outside and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, because we got our property back. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. I wish you good luck from here on. <laughs> Don't forget, call us, and we'll come and get you, sort your bits out. Okay? Okay. Just relax. Okay. Good luck. Take care, sir. Be good. All right, you take care. Good luck going forward. Thank you. Good luck. I'm going to cry. Good luck.
All the family can do now is sit in their car and wait for the council to tell them where they'll be spending the night. It's emotional at the best of times for anybody when they get asked to leave their property. Some people handle it better than others. Obviously, you know, he... Yeah, you've got to feel sorry for him because, you know, all right, they are possibly in the wrong. They haven't done what they're supposed to have done. They have been evicted. And it, it's just, yeah, it's... Some people just take it really hard, really hard to heart. Which is understandable. Figures published recently reveal that over 1,500 county court judgments were issued every day last year. This amounted to a staggering £1.6 billion worth of debt. Today, Stuart McCracken and Ian Taylor are on their way to Sheffield with a High Court writ against a car dealership. Defending Paul Walker. Too fast, too furious. And that's him. I'm expecting lots of souped up Japanese cars then. You think? Yeah. <laughs> well, like the films. Some air, skyline, the skyline, um, nitrous, yeah. alloys, tyres. Hopefully the cars will be free of finance. It'll give us a bit of bartering power there. Hope so, yeah. The writ has been issued against Mr. Walker by an ex customer. Nice. Take photos, mate. Every car. The customer claims that a car he bought from Mr. Walker's business was faulty. Oh, I'm no, sorry, I didn't see you in the office there. You after Mr. Paul Walker? Uh, he's not on this site, he's at another site. Right, so you're able to get him on the phone, mate? Yeah, yeah of course I am, yeah. Yeah. What was your guy? Um, well, high court enforcement. All right, Sam. Yeah. Even though Mr. Walker isn't here to receive the writ in person, he is now officially on a deadline. Mr. Walker has to pay the full amount in the next two hours, or Stuart will seize his cars. Do me a favour, mate. Can you do your HPI on all, all vehicles, mate, please? Right, so I'll start with this. Whiskey Alpha 5-2. The first thing that we do do when we get there is checking to make sure that none of them are on finance by doing a HPI check. Um, uh, once we find out that they are free of finance, it can be rewarding to know. You know, it means that we have got bargaining power to get this debt paid in full. Oh, lovely new car smell. <sighs> right, thanks a lot. The office calls okay, with some good right. news. Right. All free of finance. Yeah, OK, that'll do. Free, free of finance. <laughs> Stuart now has some serious leverage to get a result. Good day, isn't it? Now you find out they're free of finance. That means that we can take them. Stuart instructs Ian to seize the four most expensive cars as soon as possible. Get the make and the model, the colour, as much description as possible of number all vehicles, plates. number plates, exactly it. Yeah. It's quite straightforward, this one, really, isn't it? Although the assets are now seized, Mr Walker can still keep hold of his cars as long as he pays up in full. Good afternoon, Mr Walker. My name is Mr McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. The total amount outstanding, including the cost for us being here today, is £5,109.40. That needs to be paid in full, Mr Walker. If not, we'll be uh, removing assets. But Mr Walker may have a means of avoiding payment and keeping his cars. I'll see you in about 20 minutes to half an hour. He said he's got an application from the court to say that they've got more time to get evidence together, which sounds like a stay of execution, which means that obviously we can't do much today. Um, uh, so he says he's going to be down about 20 minutes to half an hour and show us that, that documentation. For Stuart, a car enthusiast, killing time in a car showroom is a welcome break. It's my dream car, this is. Yeah? Yeah. Always wanted one of these. Always. Yeah. 850, five litre. Half an hour later, Mr Walker arrives with his paperwork. Right, okay, you all right? Yeah. <laughs> so this is a letter that we've got. We didn't get informed of the court date. Yeah. We phoned up the court to ask advice and yeah. say, we haven't been right. informed of the court gate. What do we do? They said, you send a letter in. Yeah, yeah. We get the letter. Yeah, no, it's true. That letter doesn't mean anything. 
all that size is, and then for application to set aside the order is required along with the court fee of 50 quid. Yeah, which we got on the 14th, which yeah. we've sent back to them, yeah. and they said they're going to send us a new court date. Yeah. Mr Walker's attempt to appeal the original county court judgment has been superseded by the claimant's High Court writ. <laughs> like I said, it's a High Court writ outstanding that's active now. And there's nothing on there to say that it's been stayed. An application to set aside the order is required, yeah. so that hasn't been done yet. Which we've sent, yes okay. it has. So you need to phone the court and find out if that application has been received. You need to do that now. It would be nice if the courts and the High Court would speak to each other and say what's going on, because we've got a letter from the courts which arrived, and two working days later, we've got the High Court here. And we don't think it's fair. We still want to represent ourselves. We still want to put our case across, because we believe we have a case to, to fight. We haven't been allowed to do that. Totally different departments and totally different divisions, so the court is nothing to do with the High Court. So when the Mr done, Walker gets an answer from the court, but it's not the one he's hoping for. But because it's only a letter saying send an application in, the judge might not set the case aside, so they're still within the rights to take goods. I've spoke to the court and the courts have agreed that what they're saying is correct. There's nothing they can do apart from pay the High Court rate or seize the assets, one of the two, whatever comes sooner. So um, uh, that's the information that we want to hear. With the clock ticking, Mr Walker hits the phone. All right, so I'll give you till half three to try and get this sorted out. If not, I'll be ringing transportation for the vehicles to be removed. Puts me in control by saying, look, I'm going to give you 30 minutes to try and find some money, and then I'll come back to you. So it can take up to an hour, you know, but that first 30 minutes is key because it gives the defendant time to think to try and raise the funds. Finally, he gets hold of his business partner. His business partner can sort this out. We'll pay this uh, for bank transfer, but he's not going to be back in Sheffield till five o'clock. I mean, it can be done over the phone to our office. But like I said, the balance at the moment, the total amount outstanding is £6,002.20. But the amount payable has gone up. Yep. 6000 6, because the vehicles have been seized. That's, you get a copy of this, £6,002. Right, so the enforcement fee, the enforcement fee, what's that sales stage fee for? That's for the vehicles that have been seized. But we haven't actually seized They've them? They've been seized. So you get 800 odd quid, 900 quid to thick end for writing them down on a bit of paper? Yeah, because the vehicles have been seized. To be a High Court Enforcement Agent, you need to be quite a strong person. Um, uh, you need to know the situations that defendants will put you in, and it's only how strong you are and how experienced you are can you can get a good result on behalf of the claimants. The account name, if you put it in the name of a DCBL, that's Delta Charlie Bravo Lima. Yep, no problem at all. OK, I'll pass you back now. The full amount is paid and cleared. Okie dokie, no thanks. No problem. No problem. Take Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Cheers, See guys. Later. See you later. Hey, if you more high court seeing, I'll be cruising around in my Anyway, off to come with you. Latest figures show that the number of landlords going to court to repossess property has reached a record high. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in Nine Elms, London, to take possession of a flat. The landlord has refurbished the building and wants to increase the rent. Paul and Steve have already evicted some of the tenants. And today, it's the turn of the last remaining tenant. Hello. Yeah, we're from uh, the High Court. We have an eviction order for your flat. Were you expecting us? Yeah, she was. <laughs> we saw her before. Can we come in? Yesterday. Uh-huh. Have you got somewhere to go? Sorry? Have you got somewhere to go? The tenant came here as a refugee from Somalia and has lived in the flat for five years. Yeah. How long will you need now to go? Go? Yeah. I think come um, after three o'clock. The tenant speaks some English, but without anyone to help her, Paul is concerned about how much she really understands. We need to change the locks? No, only for me. That one, OK. Thank you. 
This is the only home the tenant has known since arriving in Britain. It's quite a nice place, this, isn't it? She walks with a stick. Moving out will require assistance. You've got to go now. Today. 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 Yeah. I understand. The tenant is still showing no signs of moving. Paul tries again to explain that she has to vacate now. You've got to leave today. You have to go now. Finally, a friend calls. But it seems that the tenant has understood some of what Paul has been saying. Could I speak to him? Hello? Are you... Sorry, you speak English? No, she's got one hour to get her personal belongings out. OK, thank you. She'll explain. <clears throat> the tenant is now homeless. She must apply to her local council for help. The entire system is geared up to rehousing people like her. So 70% of the people we're evicting are refugees from Somalia, North Africa, wherever it might be. I don't pretend to understand why or how that system works as it does, but it does. She's packed, she's ready, she was expecting this to happen. It's like Alice in Wonderland, really. She'll go to the council, they'll find her emergency accommodation. Hopefully they've got interpreters there who speak Somalian. 20 minutes later, the tenant's friend, Fozia, arrives to help. Fozia insists that the tenant is too frail to move all of her belongings out today. If, she, if you give her a key, she can come back. Repair, but no. she worries her stuff. Sorry? She worries her stuff. Can you give her a key, please? No, she's got to leave now. She will have to telephone... But she's sick, even she can walk, you know that? Huh? Before she moves, you have to give her every no. two, a two days, one day. She's had, court, she's she's had court papers. Well, then she needs to go down to the council. You have to give her nothing. No, we don't. There is no notice. Why? <coughs> because this is from the High Court, not from the County Court. <laughs> The agents have no choice but to enforce the writ today. The tenant has to accept that now really does mean now. It's the old story here, the longer you give them, the longer they'll take. They want three o'clock for a reason, then they want tomorrow. We'll give her a set of keys back so she can get her stuff out. And we need to give her notice. They've got all the right answers, just in the wrong sequence. Oh, look at that. Is that a master locksmith or what? Let's just go and G this process up. How long? Five minutes? About 20 minutes. No, we want to be gone in five minutes. We've been here for an hour. Obviously, you have to understand that there is a language problem. The other lady tends not to speak much English. This one speaks a bit more English. She believes that the system should work her way. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't. Even as they're leaving, Fozia is determined to argue her friend's case. OK, OK, let, let, me, let me just tell you... Hello, excuse me, let me tell you how the process works. Let me tell you how... I don't care, let me tell you how the process works. The court, the court told her ages ago that she had to go. You OK, my love? Thank you very much. Bye-bye. You take care. Be <laughs> yes. lucky. Yes. You should be luckier than you are today. After fleeing from war-torn Somalia five years ago, the tenant's future is once again uncertain.
All of this is just the way it goes. We turn up, pantomime starts, on switch, council. Everybody rushes round. We're seen as the villains of the piece. We'll now go and do the next one, and that'll be exactly the same. Pantomime two for the day, system cranks up, order, council, whole thing rolls on. And the only downside to this, if there is a downside, is that we've had a language problem here, which we can apologise for. We don't speak Somali, but 70% of the people we're evicting are people in circumstances like this.